welcome to another edition of the 8-Bit Basement. I am Matt. This is Joe. Uh, what are we doing tonight, Joe? You know, I don't really know. We just keep drinking these beers. We could. I got two more. Huh. Or we could disable a Nintendo lockout chip. A lockout chip? What's that like? What's that Nintendo implemented a lockout chip in its console in order to prevent third-party games makers from being able to produce games. It was Nintendo's intention to only allow officially licensed games to be able to be played on their console. When the console is powered on, the chip in the game communicates with the chip in the console, and the game is allowed to be played. When the lockout chip fails to communicate correctly, the NES CPU will generate system resets at one-second intervals, aka the blinking red light of death. Oftentimes, dirt or corrosion can interrupt the proper chip communication, resulting in the lockout chip disallowing the game to be played or blinking incessantly. Disabling the lockout chip allows the user to play imported games without special adapters, play unofficial and homebrew games, and forever stop the red blinking light. Disabling the lockout chip, though, will not allow you to play certain unlicensed games. Who was that? Did you invite him? I didn't. Did you get any of that? I have no idea what just happened. Could you do that again slower? Yeah, a little bit slower, please. <sighs> Idiots. Disabling the lockout chip will allow you to play imported games, play most unofficial and homebrew games, and will stop that little red light from blinking forever. Ah. Oh. Uh... That uh, makes sense. Okay. That makes sense now, yeah. Yeah. Here's a video. So for the sake of time, we're going to speed up the process of opening the NES console. We assume if you're doing this modification, you probably already know how to open the console and access the board. And if not, hey, that's okay. We'll leave a link to a good tutorial down in the description. And now that you have the board out, this is the chip that we're going to be modifying. And this is the pin we're going to be disconnecting. It's the fourth from the left. So the best way to tackle this is to get a very small screwdriver or even a dental pick. And what you want to do is pry the pin away from the chip, but be very careful to not damage the chip itself. From there, once it's pulled away from the chip, you can get your flush cutters and snip it away from the board. And we'll just clean this up a bit. We wanna make sure there's no connection so that circuit cannot be completed. And as we finish cleaning this up, just a quick disclaimer, if you're a collector and own a lot of unlicensed games, this might not be the modification for you. Reason being, some unlicensed games work by sending a voltage pulse into the lockout chip to disable it. If there's no lockout chip for it to connect to, those cartridges can get extremely hot and can actually damage the game. Alright, looks like we're just about finished cleaning this up. And this is what your chip will look like with the pin removed. Let's give it a test. <laughs> 